Have you ever thought about translating your YouTube channel or your online course into another language? If so, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to compare two applications used for AI dubbing and video translation, HeyGen and Dubformer. I used both applications and I'm going to share my results with you so that together we could figure out which one is better and which is more suitable for your needs. I'll be sharing my insights on three key aspects, user experience, pricing and translation quality. I translate of one of my short videos to Spanish and at the end of this video we're gonna see the results. There's more, I also recorded a video of me reading the same text in Spanish, so you have the opportunity to compare the results of two AI dubbing applications and a person actually speaking the language. I guess that should be fun. And by the way, if you'd love to replicate this experiment and do the same comparison by yourself, you'll likely to run into some challenges. It took me two days to create this video because HeyGen currently has a queue. Therefore, I'd greatly appreciate if you support this video. Let's go. Why would I do this comparison? Well, I speak four languages, although the definition of someone speaking a language is quite subjective. And I also have some experience working with technology and I'm always fascinated by the latest developments and what AI can do. But at first, who am I kidding? I was not fascinated. I was downright scared. I looked at all these artificial intelligence technologies through the lens of, oh, it's gonna replace me. Oh, it's gonna make my skills obsolete. Am I the only one who had such concerns? If you're anything like me, share your thoughts in the comments. At the same time, at some point it hit me that falling behind on the latest tech trends can make you feel out of touch. That's why I decided to experiment with HeyGen and Dubformer translating one of my videos. So let's see if AI dubbing is as good as they say. And as I promised in the beginning of this video, we are starting with user experience. I first registered in HeyGen a few weeks back because I was so interested and everyone was talking about it. But at some point, I just gave up because I couldn't find where to translate my video. Video translation is clearly something they're not focusing on. It's an additional feature to what they're already doing, and their primary focus seems to be creating avatars. They currently support Spanish, French, English, Italian, Hindi, German, Polish, Portuguese, Mandarin, Japanese, Dutch, Turkish, Korean, and Arabic. At this point, when you register, you get two minutes of video translation for free, and your video has to be between 30 seconds and two minutes. And initially it was a challenge for me because the video I wanted to dub was less than 30 seconds, but eventually I had to pick another video. And here we go. I initially planned to share the results the very same day, but then I discovered that to try out HeyGen you have to wait in a queue for two days. Yeah. When I uploaded my video, my number was 2,500 something. And as I was monitoring the queue, it seems like it translates to the number of minutes that you need to wait until your video is ready. I'm going to be blatantly honest. I hate queues. Some companies make you wait in a queue to try their technology. Other companies make you wait in a queue to buy out their handbag. Waiting in a queue for days is not the best experience. And yeah, I get it. Maintaining and infrastructure costs money, but giving users the chance to test out the technology is pretty darn important. I initially planned to translate two videos and that was my second challenge. As I uploaded my next video, I discovered that I can only upload one video a day on my account. No big deal though, I thought, I'm just gonna register another account. It's gonna take a few days. Now on to Dubformer. It was actually a breeze to translate my video with them. Um, no cues, no time constraints. Um, and the results came in pretty fast. They support more languages than HeyGen. Uh, like in addition to HeyGen, they offer uh, Hebrew, Indonesian, Malay, Russian, and Ukrainian. And the number of output languages is really impressive because there are just dozens of them. I don't know how many, but you can definitely find any language you can think of there. And so if you need to translate your video to any of those languages, you can do that in their app. Next part is pricing. Now you might be wondering about the cost of dubbing. Let's break it down. If you're planning to dub your YouTube videos using HeyGen's monthly subscription, you'll be shelling out $59 and in return you'll get 30 credits. Yeah, it's not really straightforward. Each credit equals one minute, which effectively means that you'll be getting 30 minutes of translation. So the math works out to $2 a minute. But here's the catch. 
Each video should fall within 30 seconds to 3 minute range. Maybe it could work well for shorts, but uh, it makes it pretty hard to use for long form videos. Heijin is definitely impressive and fun to experiment with, but using it for larger real world projects, it doesn't seem like a viable option, at least for now. Now let's talk Dubformer. They don't list pricing plans on their website at all, <laughs> which makes it a little more complicated. But from what I've gathered, they charge $1 per minute for videos of any length. Additionally, if you're looking for a sound like voice which is akin to a voice cloning they charge extra five dollars the cool part is though there are no video length limitations you can just paste the link to your youtube video and get the result so if you're dubbing a one hour video it would cost you 65 dollars which I think is not much. Heijin would set you back $96 for the same task. Another neat thing about Dubformer is that they don't offer subscription plans on their website, which means you're paying per video. And that's a pretty appealing option in my book. And finally, let's compare the result, the quality of translation. I won't be making any comments because I'm still waiting for Heijin results as I'm recording this video. Here are some expectations I have. I expect to hear my voice with both platforms. Um, Heijin is supposed to have lip sync, so my lips will be moving according to the um, according to the text, as if I were speaking Spanish. So right now, I'm gonna show you three videos in Spanish. One was dubbed with Dubformer, one was dubbed with Heijin, and one is just a video of me reading the same text in Spanish with no technologies involved, okay? Let me know in the comments which one you love the most and what do you think of translation quality. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and hear are the results. Un blog de moda de éxito puede generar ingresos a través de una combinación de diferentes métodos, incluidos los productos de afiliados, tus propios productos y los ingresos por publicidad. Y aquí hay una bloguera de moda que ganó más de 11 mil dólares al mes. Chick Pursuit bloguea sobre moda, nuevas colecciones, marcas destacadas y todo lo que ocurre en el sector. Ese mes generó $8,700 gracias al marketing de afiliación. Casi $2,000 de anuncios en YouTube, $400 de la venta de sus propios productos y $320 de contenidos patrocinados. Un blog de moda exitoso gana dinero con afiliados, productos y publicidad. Bloguera de moda ganó $11,000 al mes. Chick Pursuit bloguea sobre moda y marcas destacadas en la industria. Ese mes generó $8,700 de marketing de afiliados, casi $2,000 de anuncios y YouTube, $400 de vender sus propios productos y $320 de contenido patrocinado. Un blog de moda de éxito puede generar ingresos a través de una combinación de diferentes métodos, incluyendo los productos afiliados, sus propios productos y los ingresos publicitarios. Y aquí hay una bloguera de moda que ganó más de 11.000 dólares al mes. Chick Pursuit bloguea sobre moda, nuevas colecciones, marcas destacadas y todo lo que ocurre en el sector. Ese mes generó 8.700 dólares gracias al marketing de afiliación, casi 2.000 dólares de anuncios gráficos en YouTube, 400 de la venta de sus propios productos y 320 de contenido patrocinado.